I feel like I get corona off a party. Um, I got corona the correct way. Motherfuckers just get corona from opening the door. Now. I can get it from the party. Come on, man. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to have fun. It's another episode. I'm here with my dog, the Holy Kush. My boy Travis. Travis, my fault. Travis, the Holy Kush. You already know. We live locked in. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, my boy is an artist. Uh, I don't even know. He told me his whole cannabis resume. I don't even know what to call him because y'all niggas be saying y'all know weed, but this nigga really knows weed. Um, <laughs> so you feel me? So yeah, we finna get into all that shit. So uh, we on Cali, man. Like I said, he you feel me? He knows weed. He's a dispensary worker right now at Common Dispensary. That's where we, I bumped into him at. Yeah, I fuck yeah. with Common. Nice little vibes in there. Um, so you feel me? But before we hop into that, my boy is from Jersey, right? Yeah. So yeah, you feel me? what about you out to Cali? So, man, what brought me out to Cali is after I went to school in Florida, in Miami, and then after I graduated, I make music too. So I was trying to come out here to make music and I love sure. weed and shit. So like, I was like, yo, LA got weed and music. So that's the next place. You know what what was your major? Uh, marketing and international business. Okay, so yeah, I remember you told me you, you worked out at, uh, with a couple startups, a couple uh, dispensaries. Yeah. So that's how you worked in your marketing degree, I guess. Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of. Uh, I helped open a few shops. Uh, I helped open a few Madman shops. Uh, it was pretty cool, man. I used my marketing degree doing that. Helped them assist them building out a couple of things, talking about the PLL system and shit like that. Like, real regular, regular shit. Yeah, you know, some light shit, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but you say you're a musician, so what kind of music you make? I checked out, um, well, I, first I saw your shit, you said, uh, Bitches Hate 2K. You got that <laughs> shit out right now. That was yeah. the first, I looked on this page, you got a song called Bitches Hate 2K, or Bitches Hate 2K. Bitches Hate 2K. Check that shit out. What inspired you to make that? You feel me? Somebody pissed you off or what? Low key, low key, man. Like, a group of them. You know what I mean? You know when the yeah. whole roster acting up, you know what I mean? You want to... You want to send them off to uh, uh, New Orleans, like, you know what I mean? Like Lonzo Ball and them, you know what I mean? But yeah, man, what inspired me, you know, the games that they play, but they hate playing 2K. So I was, it's really a freestyle song just to be yeah, funny yeah. and shit, you know what I mean? It was really funny. I was in Atlanta when I made it at my brother crib, my brother Stevie crib. It was just like a vibe. He threw the auto tune on there for me. So I was just playing around, having fun. I was like, oh, this shit pretty, this shit a little bop, yeah. you know what I mean? So. I had to wait for the new 2K to come out to drop it though. I mean, you play so. the new 2K yet? Yeah, I got the new 2K right now. Nobody, like nobody could beat me. Holla at me. I mean, what's your uh, PSN? What you play on Xbox and PSN? PS4, dog. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, Kill 'em Kush 420, man. Yeah, it's Kill 'em Kush 420. Come holla, ho get this L. So I right, so um, I also checked out this shit, Killer Season. Oh yeah. And then uh, I watched the video for that. You feel me? Impactful. You feel me? Powerful. Yeah. yeah. What inspired you to, for that? You feel me? I see that's more type of sound. Of yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, my manager Rena. She directed that whole shit for me and edited that shit. Shout out to her. Uh, Pretty much, man, it was right through that time, man. I actually made the song before quarantine, before all the riots and everything, because I'm always in go mode. I'm always empowered, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, my melanin always charged up, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? My shit always charged. And and uh, I made that song, like, you know, the killer season is just a vibe. And then after all everything went down, I'm like, yo, this is the sound of what's going on, like, you know what I'm saying? So sure. we, we were out there in the streets protesting every day, the riots every day. And we just made that video just to just to bring together the sound with the visuals. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it came out pretty cool. I mean, it was our first little yeah. thing we did. So, uh, yeah. So, what's next for you on the music tip? For next for me, I got a, a song called uh, "Cop the Drop Top" and "Hot Box the Whip" about to come out. You got some visuals too for it? Or? Yeah, that's about to. Um, we about to shoot that. I got a song raw that's out right now. I'm about to drop another video for that. Um, also, uh, I got this freestyle that I did over the Mighty Tree beat, which is a song by Kamasi Washington and um, okay. Robert Glasper and them boys. They did a whole thing, so I wrapped over a beat and shot a video for that shit. When you got a thing coming out of an EP or something? Shit, right now, man, I'm I'm probably going to drop something like around November, to be honest. Like, I've been dropping little little spurts here and there, so I'm thinking about that. Everybody keep asking about a little tape or whatever. So I'm about sure. to put out a little tape. How did like you feel me Corona affect your shit? Did you fuck with it? Okay. I fuck with Corona, bro. Like as far as like not the deaths, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like the world chilling out, I always say like, yo, I feel like 
the world need to do this every like two years, shut down for half a year, everybody chill out just so the environment could breathe, so the earth could breathe, the water could come back. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get their mind back like the like a world weekend type vibe, but like for months. You know what I'm saying? Because we we it's like working the planet out for hella years without letting it get a water break and shit. You know what I mean? It's like damn, I think even slaves got to eat. You know what I'm saying? That's real shit though, yeah. We don't think about all this shit, put it on the planet, you know, right now. Like, we, you feel me? We talking about the weed and shit, all right, you feel me? Yeah. Shit sprayed on all type of shit. Yeah. So, all right, you feel me? Going to that, so the Holy Cush, you feel me? Yeah. How you get the name? Me, I named myself. I felt like I was ordained the Holy Cush myself. Like, I was Cush Marley at first. All right. And then I was coming out with an EP called the Holy Cush EP. Cause it was gonna be really conscious. And then I was like, you know what? I'm about to just name myself the Holy Cush. Yeah. When, when you do that, what year was that? That was like 2016. That was before you came to Cali? Yeah. Damn, right, so Actually, it was 2014 then. I mean, you kind of yeah. manifested that shit too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so who before. would you say the Holy Cush, the Holy Cush is now? Right now, I'm just an honest man on a journey, man. Just like, I'm enjoying my journey, you know what I'm saying? And embracing everything, like I always say, Bro, like you never lose if you learn a lesson. So like everything that is, people take as a loss to them in their life, I take it as a lesson. And I feel like it's been manifesting a lot of great shit in my life. Like a lot of shit. I've been like doing crazy shit, bro. Like, like I stopped eating meat, stopped eating dairy and shit like that. I stopped. There was a point, nigga, I was going, nigga, I did semen retention, no fucking hoes, no jerking off for 30 days, nigga. I felt like, like Superman, I felt like I could fly, bro. Like, and it manifested a lot of shit that I never thought could happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty cool, man. All right, so you feel me on the weed too? Let me ask my my first question I got. So you see a lot of weed, you feel me, with, with TAC and numbers and shit. Yeah. What would you say about that? Like, you know, you see my some hot shit like 31, you feel me? But, you know, you got some smoke and shit that said a 22, you feel me? Hey, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. If that shit, first of all, make sure that it's, the THC that you're talking about, because a lot of people get it misconstrued that the total cannabinoids, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of packaging have total cannabinoids first and bigger. What's the, than, to, what's the difference? Go ahead. So the difference is the total cannabinoids is the percentage of all the cannabinoids that's within that flower. Sure. You know what I mean? And then the, the THC level is the, the Delta 9 THC or the THCA as well. Those are the ones that are the, what people are supposed to be looking for. But for me, bro, like um, yeah, when they when they, they test it, when they test these buds, bro, they test in the top plant, the top nug, the best nug, you know what I'm saying, that they got. They don't test that exact nug that's in your age. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you gotta be mindful of that. You know what I'm saying? So if you see something that's like, and also what I've been doing lately too, is the discrepancy between total cannabinoids and THC levels. Like if the THC, total cannabinoids is up like, 29% and then there's a THC level of 20, uh, 20, uh, 4, 25 or something like that. And then they have one that's a 22. Me personally, I, I'm going to go with the one that's 22% cannab uh, THC yeah. and 29% cannabinoids versus the 25 and then the 29 because you get more of the spectrum of cannabinoids. That's what is affecting you? That's what's giving you the benefits. That's what you really smoking weed for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then like different terpenes and things like that too, which is another thing people got to look for too. The terpene, people, the industry is about to go into a way that it's going to get away from indica sativa and hybrid because everything is more or less a hybrid nowadays. Like right. it's just like, yeah. It, and it's like, it's just like, you look at the shit like human beings more or less like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, we black, but like, it's a lot of people. We got other shit in us, you know what I'm so, saying? So it's like, when when uh, when uh you talk about the weed and shit, like that shit is, is going to a place of like, um, where the terpenes affect you, you know what I'm saying? So like, you got beta caryophylline, you got humulene, you got uh, fucking um, myrcene, limoline and linalool like those things are in every single plant there's some shit in this there's a terpene in this there's some beta caryophylline in this probably like you know what i'm saying that is what really affects what's going on and that's what really gives you that effect of oh i'm 
and I feel energized when you hit some like yeah when you it's sativa but it's really the the sativa indica is the the phenotype of the plant like you know what I'm saying what it actually look like like the 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 indicas is the more short bushier ones and the sativa is the more skinnier taller ones you know what I'm saying so that's how they classify it like that but as far as effects they're they're leading in towards what the terpenes is interacting with the cannabinoids and how that's affecting them because it's going to a more scientific level. For sure. So what's like, you feel me, what niggas seeing on the streets? Like, you feel me, you seeing the shit from cookies, you feel me, that's out here in Cali. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get some good honey bun, you feel me, and then the packaging. You know what I'm saying? What, how that shit working? Like, hey, how is that? I know you said, we were talking earlier about how the weed game had changed, you feel me? Yeah. yeah. You feel me? It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Everything's coming sealed now. Yeah. So, you feel me, how, how niggas getting this shit on, on the streets that way? So like how nigga or is it or you feel me not on the streets you feel me but like you know what I'm saying like you you told me like it's not really what it is you know yeah like so like like so, so like niggas, you feel niggas me, in other games, states you feel me like yeah like niggas getting the packages from Cali but yeah like that shit, you feel yeah me? That's so what like saying. so like say like right niggas in like wherever I'm gonna just name a place I don't know Tennessee or some shit I'm gonna just say Tennessee or whatever. shout out Tennessee oh yeah three six whatever. But um, it's, uh, say like in Tennessee, they got a pack coming in, right? Right. They get paid a low price. Let me get a pound for uh, 1300 ship it over, boom, boom, boom. But I'm gonna buy, let me go get these packages from downtown LA that say it's cookies. I mean, cause Photoshop, you can make any type packaging. You so know the packages saying? are not even coming from the company? Either. Yeah, no, 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 no. But there's, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say sometimes and maybe it depends on who you know, but most of the time, my nigga, if you in a Eastern Bumble fuck place in America, you're not getting a lemon pound cake from cookies. That's official tissue, unless you know somebody that's coming out here buying the apes or going to the farms and getting it from the farms and then doing that. But you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of niggas is coming out here buying packages. Eighth by eighth by eighth by eighth by eighth by eighth by eighth, and because it's tax, you know what I'm saying? They're not doing that. So the average, how much you say average eighth is right now? Out here, some gas. L.A. What you smoking? While I'm smoking, out the out the shop, probably like fifty, sixty, but that's before tax. For sure. So like my favorite strands right now, I'm smoking top shelf cultivation Wolsey Well. That's just some fire. That's just some gas. Um, I'm smoking Marathon OG. That shit is some gas. Like, don't let the percentages, bro. Like, don't let the percentages gas you, bro. Because, like, when you look at it, the more THC in it, and the less, the closer it is to the total cannabinoids, the less effect from all the other cannabinoids you're getting. You know what I'm saying? So you're not really getting that smack. That's why when you, it's like, it's like um, hitting a eating an edible that's a distillate edible versus a edible that's full spectrum that has the full plant versus just the thc in it you know what i'm saying it's a total different high my nigga you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's like they extract just the thc you know what i'm saying but some a lot of people play the thc game though but don't get it twisted like i smoke some gas that's in 22 23 even one time i ain't gonna say the name of the strand but I smoked some shit that was 17%. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show it up. I smoked this 805 glue one time. And I don't know if I just was hungry or something. I don't know, but that shit was hitting my nigga. Like 17%? 17%, that shit was hitting my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? And the difference too, like a lot of people like indoor weed. I like indoor weed too. Indoor weed is popping. But when you want to talk about real life benefits of cannabis, you got to understand that it's a real life plant. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's gonna benefit more. You're gonna get That's more benefits like, from that real life sun. Nothing is more powerful than that sun, my nigga. It's just like a, a girl going tanning, tanning bed or the motherfucking sun. You know what I'm saying? You going you higher risk of cancer from the light than the real light, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. So, that's how I feel. So what's, what you see going on? I know you told me you went to Denver and you feel you, you know what I'm saying? You've been around with the package. So what you see going on with the cannabis industry as far as nationwide? Nationwide, it's going to depend on each different region and you're really going to start to understand the difference of styles of each region. Like 
in Oregon and shit, right? Oregon is laid back, laid back as fuck. Every shop I went to out there was laid back. Every shop I went to in Denver was laid back. Shops out here, LA, it feels like you in LA. Like it feels like, yeah, like, like that you shit you see on TV. Yeah, like every store, like most of the stores, you just feel like, damn, like I, I don't, I can't afford this shit. Like the average customer, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? They walking that shit like. Where the fuck am I? You know what I'm saying? But I understand it. That's just what LA is. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's just going to depend on where the shops are at. Like Denver was really like homey, really like comfortable, really like they made you feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Out here, I'm a I'm a bud tender out here. I was a sales lead out here. I was a vendor out here. I was all that shit out here. And I just know that it's not a laid back vibe because there's so many sharks out here like everybody's trying to like get that, get that yeah get that top that cookie level type shit. yeah they everybody's trying to get that name out there that that cookies that jungle boys that la kush you know what i mean that viola you know so yeah so talk about some of that shit like you feel me like you said jungle boys you feel me uh backpack boys you feel me what's the hype on that shit you feel me is it is it, is it worth this shit or you feel me are you finding the same shit in dispensaries i mean you definitely it depends on the genetics, man. Like, if you want to smoke that specific strand that they have the hold on of the genetics, then definitely it's worth the price. It depends on what kind of smoke you are, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of different type of smokers out there. So it's like, nigga, if you a smoker, you smoke every single day, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to be spending, I don't know if you a regular ass nigga and you got a regular ass job and shit like that. Yeah. Nigga, your ass don't need to be smoke. Well, I'm not gonna advise you to be smoking sixty dollar A's plus tax every day. If you a real smoker, cause you smoking an A for day. If you a real smoker, that's what's that? Two woods, two leaves, three leaves, max. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so it's like, max. you know what I'm saying? Real smokers, that's like before they go to work type vibe. You know what I mean? So, I feel like you can find that quality above for. A lower strand it's just all about digging and finding it's just like like back in the day when niggas used to dig for records and dig mm-hmm. for like you know what i mean it's just like that so i remember like uh, yeah so, so since you say that i remember like you used to can find like a good 25 dollar 35 back in the day you feel yeah me? now you you feel me you, you could damn near find a good 40 dollar 35 50, you know what i'm saying it's going up every year 2021 how much you think we're gonna be for a a good a 50. 50. next year Oh, next year? No, next year? Yeah. Due to all these fires out here? Yeah. $80 apes, my nigga. Nigga, shit, $60 huh? is going to be the regular standard price out here for some all right, regular weed, but with name on it. But I'm telling niggas, you don't, you don't have to go that route. You can find a, a company out there that's got some good shit that's low key. Like, you know sure. what I'm saying? Like, like, like good flower. That's some good weed for some. Good that's some, some low key butter, shit. Bro, that was some smoke. Yeah, some GMO that was some smoke for the low ball. Josh D, the nigga that brought OG to America. His shit be low ball. You know what I'm saying? He had some dosy face. That shit was testing out like 22, 23. That, that shit's pretty as fuck. That shit smoking. That shit was smoking. That shit was 32, 35. You know what I mean? And it's always gonna be. That area of like Pacific Stones, Dimebacks, bro. Niggas just sleep on Pacific Stone, bro. They have some gas sometimes, bro. It's all about the batch, bro. Check the batch, bro. You can. So, all right, what's check the batch? How do you do that shit? I've been looking at Pacific Stone when I'm out here, but yeah. I don't know. You feel me? I might have to get, go get you to go get that shit. Every time you go to a shop, first thing you do, check the Pacific Stone. See if they got a batch that's good. Because sometimes they have some shit that's testing how do you that. Know, bro? Oh, you see the everything out here. The percentages has to be on the bag, on the packaging. Right. So when you see the, when you see it, when you grab it, just look at the percentage because it's gonna be a different percentage each batch because each batch that they ship out has to be tested. So it's, it's a whole ounce. Each batch of whatever, like the pound or whatever oh, they yeah. harvest it off of that uh, amount, they have to uh, test that before they ship it out. You know what I'm saying? So like. So like basically like each round each re up they gotta they gotta uh yeah, they gotta test that shit. So like each time we run out of uh Pacific Stone at our shop, we get a new batch of Pacific Stone, it's a whole new batch. It might be some fire in there, my nigga. You gotta check that shit. That shit be testing at twenty 
four twenty five. Sometimes you walk out with an ounce, nigga, for one hundred and twenty dollars, my nigga. Sometimes I see some with it, cables still stone like twenty one. Right. I, I still ain't trusted though. No, you can trust it when it, I'm tough. It's going, but you gotta understand what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta smoke it for what it is. You nah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, smoke it for what it is. But I'm a nigga that's smoking Marathon right now. I'm a nigga that's smoking World Sea Water right now. I'm a nigga that's smoking Blue Box right now. I'm a nigga that's smoking. What else I'm smoking right now? I love that LA Kush Blue Box. Uh, you fuck with the Black Gelato, the LA Kush Black Gelato? Yeah, that shit tasty. I just like the taste on that for real. I'm more of an indica guy. That shit kind of like a 50 50. But yeah, it's a high level shit. Um, I was fucking with that Granimals by Maven too. That shit was pretty tasty. How many dispensaries you right there? One, two, just three. Okay, three. Sure. Over the course of what, like a year or two, three years. Shit, like three years. Sure. Three years. I mean, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I'm no, in and out of these motherfuckers. I mean, I, I use it for what it's worth and get up out of there. I like. I like everybody that be working in there and shit, but I'm more like a, I feel like a partner instead of a worker. You know what I'm saying? That's how I be coming at it. And I yeah. feel like. Because you got your own bread as the Holy Kush type yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, so, where you looking to take your, your Holy Kush? But I know you said you ended up one time with some Holy Kush OG that was in a dispensary. Oh, uh, yeah. How yeah. did that happen? Oh, so I was uh, basically a hood vendor, essentially. So I had a plug. I would get blessed for the low, some real fire OG. And essentially, like, I would go to shops out here. This before everything was all legal. I would go to shops out here and basically just sell them pounds as a vendor. I would come to them really professional. So, like, everything is all in the approach, you know what I'm saying? Like, I already know that. And I already had sales background from other jobs that I had. So, like, I would come to them real professional, ask to speak to the manager, ask to speak to the owner of the shop, tell them I have this for this price. We can work out a deal if we get two, three, four. I will also have carts as well. So I, one of the shops on like four from Broadway in like downtown, it was a UVC. He was like one of my main customers getting carts, getting pounds, all that shit. I came to some fire one time. He like, what can I name this? I was like, name whatever you want. And I was, it was like, I can totally push OG. He was like, all right, bet. Cause you know niggas, everybody know when you go to these trap shops, it's not really what you, what they name in it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just some OG, you some know what I'm saying? OG the name yeah, and then they just put the name of Holy Kush OG on there. And he was just buying that shit, but I left, went to Atlanta, came back, all the shops were shut down. That's what that's what the legal shops did. That's what the excise tax do. So what's that of, excise tax? I, I peep that now too when I come out here and buy the spaces. I got two different taxes on my yeah. own. What's, what's the difference between those? So the sales tax, you know, that's just government right. things okay. and everything like that. The excise tax is a tax that is for the cannabis industry. So it just helps with uh, like locking up niggas that's uh, doing all the illegal trap shops. It goes to like the the cannabis waste management it goes to uh um some type of it has to, some have to go to the community around you too like in every shop you have to get some have to get back to the community and shit depending on where you're located and shit like that and uh that's pretty much it i think i'm there's probably some more shit and there's probably some less shit but so i mean i uh, you touched on a lot how would you say it is though for like black people in cannabis, you feel me? Like yourself, you feel me? You obviously know a lot, but I'm pretty sure, you feel me, it's somebody that know less a lot, you know, in higher yeah. places or- Yeah, you know? definitely, you know, it's uh, definitely marginalized. Um, that's how I feel, like, just like any other industry in America, but this one is just crazy how fast it just went like that. Like, now I really start to see like how America works. Like, like um, that's what, Cannabis going legal just really opened my eyes to not even just black people, but like Latinos as well out here, just like understanding and knowing who was the backbone of this shit out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a collective effort, actually, blacks, whites, Hispanics. It was a collective effort, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of, a lot of Latinos and black people, they were up in them fields trimming them weeds, planting them shits. So they brought a lot of different grow operations that was up there for years and years. years generations, generations. Got, yeah, shit. shut down because some people didn't have enough money to get those fucking 
licenses and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Who are they? Yeah, for sure. Like, you said that bitch like a million almost. Yeah, like, it's a lot of money, bro. That's how they marginalize us out of a lot of shit. They lock us up for doing this shit one year, and then on, on mm. December 30th, and then January 1st, nigga, white people making millions off this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've seen it with my own eyes. My nigga, I've been on both sides of the situations. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got niggas that got locked up for for clips of weed and then I'm now I'm working with niggas that's making millions off of off of cannabis. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then understanding that there's a lot there's a there's a few black companies out there that's doing really good. Like Viola, you got um uh, Exhibit out there doing this thing, Jim Jones and them they do anything, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like people should be picking up those brands. People wanna talk all this Black Lives Matter, blah, 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 in this cannabis industry. Yeah. But I feel like niggas got to really, all right, let's get some black brands in here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wu-Tang and them boys, they got a strand. Mike Tyson got a strand. Whoopi Goldberg got a wooden strand. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people out here in California, in LA, Bob Marley. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit that, you know what I mean? Not but crazy, it's different, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. So, well, shit, it's been real, man. Shout your socials out. So, man, I appreciate sure. you for coming on. Uh, for me, let them know when your next single dropping. Drop, drop your socials, all that shit, so they can. So, hey, yeah, man, hit me at the Holy Kush on Instagram, Kush Marley Jersey with a Z on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? And I'm dropping some shit every week. So just keep tuning in to my Spotify, the Holy Kush title, Instagram, everything, nigga. The Holy, Holy Kush. Kush. Appreciate you. Yeah. Good up, bro.